But Alice Walker wrote the novel The Color Purple, uh, a very powerful novel about race and gender and the oppression of African Americans and slavery, just a really dynamic figure. And Alice Walker gained quite a bit of fame for her very, very powerful anti-racist novel showing the oppression of women, showing the horrors of slavery, showing the horrors of racism, just really, really powerful stuff. Alice Walker, after, you know, she became a famous writer, uh, she went from there to continue taking stands. Uh, she stood with Cuba uh, against, uh, against the blockade, against the, the sanctions and the attempts to destabilize Cuba. She stood with Palestine very consistently. She's gone to gone to Palestine. Uh, she's she's boycotted Israel and refused to allow uh, e Israeli companies to uh, to profit and translate from her her book uh, in protest of what's been done to the Palestinians. Uh, Alice Walker is a hero. She was actually arrested in protests against the U.S. invasion of Iraq. Alice Walker is someone I've looked up to for many, many years. Um, she is uh, a feminist. Uh, she is a black liberation fighter and an activist. Uh, she is an anti-imperialist to her core. And now she's under attack. But before I get to the attacks, I want to just play you some clips of her. Because Alice Walker, you know, uh, in 2020, the recent election that happened when Joe Biden was running for the Democrats, when Donald Trump was running for re-election for the Republicans, she didn't vote for either party. She actually voted for uh, a socialist party, uh, one of the very small socialist parties called Socialist Action. She voted for Jeff Mackler uh, of the Socialist Action ticket, uh, a very small, obscure presidential campaign. Uh, it was endorsed by Cindy Sheehan. And she, she also voted for Jeff Mackler. And she gave this interview about why she was voting for Jeff Mackler. This is Alice Walker, the author of The Color Purple, anti-imperialist, progressive. This is Alice Walker. Well, I'm here actually because I think that most Americans should really think about socialism uh, as a different way to approach our many, many hydra-headed problems. Uh, and I've known Jeff Mackler for, since I was, I don't know, 18 or 19 years old. Uh, and to see that he is running for president on, on the socialist action ticket is really encouraging. It's not about whether he's going to win. Uh, I wish he would. Uh, but it's about reminding people that there is another way. Uh, you, you can't assume that it's either the Democrats or the Republicans, you know, and they just give us grief over and over again in different guises. Uh, so it's heartening, actually, to be a part of a small but hopefully growing band of people who know the reality, which is that people are horribly divided on the basis of haves and have-nots. And I grew up as a have-not. So I certainly understand the need, you know, for people to have universal health care. There's no reason why children should not have shoes in the winter. There's no reason why people should be sleeping in tents. I mean, this is just obvious. But as far as I can tell, the Democrats and the Republicans are not really thinking very much about these issues. And there's a struggle right now around the issue of Palestinian rights and uh, the Netanyahu, Netanyahu government refusing to allow uh, Congresswomen who want a Palestinian Muslim descent coming into going to Israel. What is happening and why are they being prevented from going to Israel? They don't want them to see what's in there. And, and the, the thing is, my position is that every congressperson should go to Gaza and the West Bank. And until you go there, just don't say anything. Uh, in fact, I just wrote on my blog about one of our contenders for president coming up was saying that she favors a two-state solution. Well, obviously, she's never been to Gaza. She's never been to, to Palestine because there's nothing to make it out of. I mean, what are you going to make it out of? I mean, this is over 70 years of, you know, destruction of the people's everything, their houses, their, their mosques, whatever. Uh, so it would be so wonderful if our Congress people would en masse go to Palestine. They should all apply. Everybody should go. Every single person. They should never, ever attempt to speak about Palestine without going there. I mean, how dare they? That is Alice Walker, the amazing black revolutionary novelist, feminist, uh, an, uh, an American literary giant, uh, an ally of Cuba, an ally of Palestine, an ally of, of the Iraqi people in the face of the U.S. invasion. 
just a hero in so many ways. And here's just some other comments she's given about Palestine. This is Alice Walker speaking about the, the art and the poetry of the Palestinian people. I've had many experiences with Palestine uh, in Gaza and, of course, the West Bank. But the one that I'm thinking of now is uh, Palfest, which happens every year. And a few years ago, I was uh, among the people, writers, poets, um, painters, and other artists who went to Palfest. And what amazed me in places like Ramallah and uh, Bethlehem uh, and other places is that the people were so involved, especially the students, but also their teachers, in creating literature and creating art. Uh, and people were just absolutely in love with poetry. So this was so um, soothing to my heart because I, I had been feeling so troubled with all of the madness that is happening uh, and inflicted upon the Palestinian people. Because I know from my own experience that when you are oppressed, deeply oppressed as I have been and uh, African Americans have been for you know, 400 and more years in the United States, that when you can also instill in the youth a love of poetry, a love of learning, a love of story, you're winning because it means the heart is not yet on the ground. The heart is still able to soar. And this I encountered in Palestine again and again, even in some of the most horrendous situations that people had this within themselves. And I think it's the foundation of that expression that they have of steadfastness, that we will, we will just be, you know, we will be who we are. And if we have a song, you know, that nobody wants to hear but us, then darn it, we will sing it to ourselves. And that is the creation of art. That is what it is. It is going so far into your own soul uh, that you see what is, what is so rich and so beautiful there. And so I, I salute the artists and the creators of Palestine and also the parents because I realize that parents and teachers and counselors and psychologists, all of whom I had a chance to meet, uh, I mean not every single one of them, but these are the kinds of people that I sought, I thank them so much for being there for the youth because without them, the youth will never know uh, often just how rich they are when they seem to have nothing. Art is richness. Being able to create this wealth uh, that you, you can hardly imagine. Now that is Alice Walker. Alice Walker is a revolutionary, a badass, an anti-imperialist in so many ways. There is nobody, well, there may be somebody, but there's very few people who have more anti-imperialist, progressive, uh, anti-racist, uh, gender liberation credentials than Alice Walker. She wrote The Color Purple. She's been through a lot of hardship in her life. She's become an inspiration to many women, many people of color around the world. She's stood with Palestine. She's stood with Cuba. But folks, I hate to break it to you. Alice Walker is an asshole. Alice Walker is a red-brown. She's part of the Red-Brown Alliance. She's one of these sinister people who opposes racism, opposes sexism, opposes imperialism, but is actually somehow a Nazi. That's what the synthetic left has decided. No, the same kind of woke cult that has taken over the Communist Party USA, the same type of woke cult that has taken over the Workers World Party, the same type of stupid bread tube fake left politics that is now progressing, you know, passing itself off as socialism, is trying and has canceled Alice Walker. Alice Walker is banned from the Bay Area Book Fair. That's right. The Book Fair of the Bay Area has banned Alice Walker. And you know why? They've banned her 
<sighs> because uh, she was interviewed by the New York Times Review of Books, and one of the writers that she mentioned is somebody who they consider to be a conspiracy theorist who once talked to somebody who once was the roommate of somebody who said something about the Holocaust, so therefore she's a Nazi. Don't, don't worry about the details, but she's a Nazi. She's a Nazi. Well, she's not a Nazi. Alice Walker is an amazing, dynamic individual. But this is how evil, did I say evil? I said evil the bread tubers are. They want you to believe that Alice Walker, an anti-imperialist, a progressive, that she, because she once had a book with somebody who once shook hands with somebody who said something one time, and six, and they got they get off the chalkboard and they got the chalkboard and then so you shook hands with this person who once met with this person who once talked to this person who once said this thing. So therefore, because these people are evil, and there is now a petition, and I'm posting it in the chat standwithalicewalker.org. I posted it in the chat. I want everyone on here to sign it. Sign the goddamn petition to say that Alice Walker should not be banned, should not be banned from the Bay Area book fair. The second anyone starts talking about Red Browns or Nazbulls, you should just immediately tell them you're full of shit. That's what you should do because it's bullshit. It doesn't take a rocket scientist or an expert on politics to know that Alice Walker is not a fascist. Alice Walker is not on the right. Alex Walker is not part of the national Bolshevik party that existed in Russia from the mid 90s up until 2007. Alice Walker is not an anti Semite. Alice Walker is not a Holocaust denier. Alex Walker, Alice Walker is an amazing progressive anti-imperialist writer. And if these creeps, if the people that control the Young Communist League of New York City and, and the people that, that have come to, to dominate the workers, if these people, if these people can go after Alice Walker, they can go after anybody. And they can go after anybody. Right. And when you sign it, I hope you put Center for Political Innovation next to your name. Uh, maybe leave a comment. Say you heard about it on Caleb's stream. That would be awesome if you did that. No, no requirement, obviously. But, you know, that'd be cool. But yeah, stand with Alice Walker against the wokes, the woke creeps against the woke fascists. These people are the new fascism. People on the right. And this has changed. And I know it has changed. Right. And it hasn't always been like this. Right. And trust me, I am not I am not on I am not saying the right has always been good and it's not good. The right is not good. Their ideology is completely wrong. Their views are completely wrong. Uh, a lot of times it's very backward. They, they downplay racism. They downplay the oppression of women and LGBT oppression. And and they, they have they believe free market capitalism is a good thing. I'm not on the right. But right now, because the imperialists have developed their own brand of of you know, national socialism, basically, this kind of fake socialist wokeism, uh, because that is the mainstream current of imperialism. Because that is the mainstream current of imperialism. Uh, they are now at the point where uh, they are, they are, you know, a lot of these people that just don't buy it and just don't like it and are mad about the gas prices and mad about the, the price of food and mad about the emerging low wage police state. A lot of these people are going to the right, and that's a problem because the right's views are wrong. However, you can talk to these people because they are at odds with the status quo. Meanwhile, the people that are walking around talking about red browns and talking about how Donald Trump is a Nazi and everyone they don't like is a Nazi, and if you disagree with them, you're a Nazi, and they want to stand with the Ukrainian Nazis because the Ukrainian Nazis are freedom fighters and Putin, even though he's an anti-fascist, is, is somehow a Nazi. These people are the main danger. And if you haven't figured that out yet, you should. This is the main counter gang, the main counter gang, the imperialists are using right now to attack the world, to attack Russia, to attack China, to attack Venezuela. It's the main current they're using to attack the labor movement and labor unions. It's the main current that they are using to attack uh, real socialists and leftists. And right now they're going after Alice Walker.